Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, if you've been following along on the Chevelle build, uh, the 65 Malibu here, uh, you'll be wondering, why is the Muncie four-speed sitting on the bench here when I know Mark put it in when he put the engine in? Well, uh, you can see we got the hood on. Uh, the owner came by, we got the hood on, and then I drove it down to the AC shop to get the uh, AC pump down and uh, charged up. Everything's working perfect there. Uh, but on the way there, I noticed that fourth gear had a uh, distinct sound when it was in fourth gear, only during cruising. Under acceleration, it was gone. Under deceleration, no noise either. Just under just cruising, no pressure on anything, there was a definite uh, noise. It wasn't serious, but there was a noise, so we had to do something about it. So car came back after the front end shop, and uh, I had to pull it out. It wasn't something simple. You know, you always hope it's something simple, but it never is with a transmission, is it? So uh, let's jump over here on the bench and uh, take a look at what I think is causing the problem. Okay, I've got you zoomed in here to the input shaft. So uh, before I tore it all apart, I did, did a, looked in the transmission a lot and fiddled with it, tried to get to recreate the noise. And the best I can tell is the problem is from input shaft in play. Now, obviously the bearing's not in, the retainer's not in, but with the, uh, this transmission had the bearing, which is in good shape, but I bought a new one anyways, just in case, and it had this one uh, shim in there, and this shim measures out to about uh, 31,000, 32 thousandths. So there was no slinger on this. Um, and some of these transmissions didn't come with a slinger. I'm not putting a slinger back in it. I uh, didn't have one. But what I did was, I, uh, before I tore it all apart, I checked the, the input shaft in play and it came out to 55 thousandths. Now, the best I can tell from reading around, I have trouble finding the right specs for this, but um, the best I can tell, the maximum on GM spec is 25 thousandths. So that means we're 30 thousandths way beyond uh, what GM says the in play should be. And so let me bring you around here and I'll show you what's causing this uh, to, to make the noise. Okay, I got it tipped up here. I got some light on it. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see. So, as you guys recall, um, I had to change. We had to change the counter shaft because it was leaking into the new style from FiveSpeeds.com, and we got their billet aluminum mid plate. Now, I think, uh, and that's really the only thing that we changed on this, other than gaskets. I put it back together just like it was. So, but now I have noise. So, what could have changed? So, what I'm thinking is. And this is no knock on fivespeeds.com. Their parts are perfect. Everything fit perfectly. But what I think was this transmission was so close to the edge of, of this 3-4 uh, slider rubbing causing this noise, the mid plate possibly moved the uh, main shaft back just a little bit, causing too much in play on the input shaft. So uh, let me zoom you in here. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of. But uh, let me zoom you in here and show you what's going on. Okay, so uh, here's the 1 2 slider and here's the 3 4 slider in the Muncie. So if we slide it back, it goes into third gear and the detent locks it and it's really close to this gear, the gap in between right here. So then we slide into uh, fourth right there and it detents really close to that gear as well, right? So uh, if if this has a lot of in play, let's say that gear is farther forward, the input shaft, it's going to allow this slider to go a little bit too far forward. And the edge, the very edge of this 3-4 slider is contacting the counter shaft gear down there. It's just barely touching and only once in a while. So I can feel it rubbing right now because I'm pulling the, the uh, input shaft out. Now with the bearing in it, and the shim and everything, it still rubs a little bit, just enough. I mean, you don't need much touching that's not supposed to be touching on transmission for it to make a noise. And uh, so that's, I think that's what's going on. So uh, we have 30 thousandths too much in play. So the, uh, the input shaft is too far forward by 30 thousandths. So I did a lot of looking, a lot of research, and I couldn't find the GM service manual uh, spec but I did do a lot of reading and a guy mentioned it in, uh, in a forum 
that, uh, that it's 25 thousands max. So, and he said he's done a ton of transmission, so uh, he said he sets his at 15 thousands. So we're gonna go with experience on this. I did reach out to Paul over at Gearbox Video, fivespeeds.com, and uh, he, he was gracious. He emailed back and forth. Heck, it was on the weekend, and he was emailing me back and forth trying to help me out. Uh, he was kind of thinking it was the clutch, but it only does it fourth gear. When I disengage the clutch and re-engage it, the noise, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really change in any gear. So it's not the clutch. Uh, so I really think it's this 3-4 slop right here. Uh, and I think that's what they call it, the slider slop. So the plan is I bought a shim set to, uh, to shim the input shaft. So I got that right here. And I bought a new nut and a new bearing. So let's go ahead and get that in and uh, see if that uh, remedies the problem here. Okay, I got all my parts out here. I got my shims. Uh, I got the bearing retainer where the throw up bearing sits. Uh, and I got the new bearing. Uh, and I hadn't opened it until just now. Uh, it's exactly the same brand, same part number. Everything is the original. It's uh, Jaff from Japan. Uh, they make nice bearings. But I noticed uh, it didn't feel very tight. It uh, not near as tight as the original, and then I started looking at it, and I had kind of run across this somewhere in a forum or reading something. So here's the original, and you guys can tell it's got 12 bearings in it. Here's the brand new one. They went down to eight bearings, so they downgraded it. Now, I don't know when that happened, but this is obviously an original or an older style bearing, and this one uh, is super tight and super smooth. And the only reason I bought a new one is because we're in here, and uh, when I did the original work, uh, put the mid plate and the new counter shaft in, uh, as you guys saw, I didn't change this bearing. Now, it felt good, but I'm here now, and just to hedge my bets, I went ahead and got a brand new bearing. But if you listen, hear that? There's a lot of play in here. I'm really disappointed, and uh, this bearing really uh, is not as good as this old one. So we're not going to use the new one. I'll just eat that. I already tore the package open, Oop, and I just hit the ground. So it's, uh, it's not going in this transmission. So we're going to use the original one. It's a better unit. Um, and then I'm not going to use the original shim either because it actually doesn't fit on the shaft all that well. It jiggles around quite a bit. So uh, these shims I bought, I actually bought these off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, these fit on here nice and smooth, and they are the exact same size as the inner race here. So uh, that's perfect. The other one was oversized and covered the bearings a little bit. I do know there's a, usually a slinger on here. I'm not gonna use a slinger. I didn't buy one. It didn't have one. Some of these Muncie's didn't have a slinger. So I'm just going that route. So uh, so we had 55 thousandths play with a 31 thousandths shim in there. So what we need to do is get that down to around 15 thousandths. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to start off with a combo that's going to get me to about 60, 63 thousandths. So we're going to go ahead and put that together. And what we're going to do is we're not going to put the nut on here because that would defeat the purpose of getting the end play. Because what we want is uh, what the distance is between the end of the input shaft and the end of the main shaft. That distance in there. There's bearings inside there. Uh, uh, inside the, uh, the main shaft and they run around on the uh, input shaft. So where those two meet, we want about 15 thousandths. So right now we have 55 thousandths. We've got a, uh, you know, the Grand Canyon in there. So we got to get that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and gently tap this bearing in. And it's, uh, it's not hurting it just to tap. I'm just tapping on the race a little bit here and we'll get this thing in. Okay, tapped in. I tapped on it really lightly. You're not going to hear that race doing that. So what we need to do is measure that right there right now. And to make sure that this bearing is held up against the case properly, we're going to put the, uh, the retainer on here. And all I'm going to do is run this up snug with no gasket in there. Now, if you put too thick a gasket in there, that could also hold that away and cause that bearing to walk out of the case a little bit which is not what you want, but if you don't use the right size uh, gasket, then it could crush it and uh, crack this. Okay, so now we need to check the end play, and that's in and out, and uh, setting up a dial indicator or anything, uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt, 
and it's kind of hard with the aluminum case anyway. So all I'm going to do is measure from the end of the input shaft back to where the throw-out bearing rides. So we're just going to slide this along here and then hit that. Let me pull it out. It's pulled out all the way. And I want to measure in the exact same spot. So we're right there. I'm going to zero it. And now we're going to push in. see where we're at here and it hardly moved so I think we're too tight yep so 63 was too tight I only got about uh, uh, two or three thousandths uh, in play so I'm gonna uh, move that down a little bit and we're gonna shoot for a 15 thousand so I'm gonna keep messing with it and I'll bring you back once we nail it okay after fiddling back and forth quite a, quite a bit uh, I've got 16 thousandths of in play and that, uh, you know, according to the spec, what I understand, 25 thousandths is max. We were at 55 thousandths and now we're down to 16. So I'm really happy about that. We're nine thousandths under the max. Uh, I don't want to go any tighter. I think that's going to work out great. And uh, when I roll the gears in fourth gear, it doesn't want to make that noise anymore when I'm pushing on the three, four slider, pushing it forward. So I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to solve the problem, I hope. So, and so over uh, at Gearbox Video, Paul over there, um, what he recommends is because uh, remember, this is the gear, this is the bearing retainer. Now, obviously, the uh, throwout bearing rides on here as well, but this actually has a lip right here that pushes on the bearing and holds it in place, okay? But there's a gap here right now, and there's a gasket that goes in there, but if if you don't put a gasket in here and you just try to crush that up against there, you could uh, break this casting or you could damage the bearing or this clip that holds the bearing from going in too far. So what he recommends is you just push it up against here like that. You can actually feel it touching the bearing and you can see it's, it's uh, sliding easily. It's not rubbing on the case right here. Then you hold it up against there and you check your gasket. So in his kits, he has two different thickness uh, gaskets, at least, that come in the kit. And if it just slides in there, you can see right there, it just wanting to slide in, this is the correct gasket. Now, if it just fell in, you know, let's say you had a feeler gauge and it just, it did that, then when you tighten it down, it's going to uh, deform this uh, cast iron uh, housing or it's going to damage the bearing. So you want a gasket that's just a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, than what you need here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the nut back on here. So I have to go find, uh, I got, got to put uh, red Loctite on here. This is a brand new nut. The other one was uh, goomered up pretty good because uh, the last guy didn't have the correct tool. And uh, I, so I made my own. And you can see here I heat treated it. And uh, so to do the job, hopefully it'll fit down inside there. It's right on the right thickness for this. So we're gonna hope that works out. And then we're gonna get some locked, uh, red Loctite on here, get this run in, get it tightened up, and then we'll get the bearing retainer on here and the side cover back on, and we're about ready to put this thing back in the car. All right, let's get some red Loctite on here. Not gonna be shy about it. New nut, left-hand thread on these. All right, I'm gonna lock it in two gears at once, which is normally impossible with the shifter, but you can do it with this. I'm gonna take a hammer and give this a couple of good, really good wax here. Okay. Check that, make sure that's good and tight. All right, let's give it a spin here. Feels good. Okay, I'm gonna get the front cover on, the bearing retainer, and uh, get this uh, shift fork uh, cover back on, and we are about ready to put it back in the car. Okay, I'm gonna use uh, silicone. This is uh, Permatex Gray. And what I'm going to do, since these holes go all the way through, 
I'm going to use this as we don't have the locking plates on here anymore. They were gone when we got this transmission. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this silicone to seal the threads and it'll also act as a thread locker. Keep these bolts from backing out. Can't really put lock washers on here. They had some lock washers on it. But the problem is uh, the bell housing registers on this flange right here and the, the uh, lock washers stick out past that. So they actually ground those down a little bit and uh, weakened them so much that they basically were useless. So we got to put the drain hole facing down. And we got to make sure that the weep hole right here that lets the oil back into the uh, housing is lined up. This really only wants to go on one way anyway, so just like that. And we'll torque these to 25 foot-pounds. Okay, let's get this on. Just like that. bolts in. Unfortunately this one had been taken apart before so the tags missing and some of that other stuff so but it's nice to have it with the car but this wasn't original to the car anyway so it doesn't really matter. This car was originally a automatic so I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these uh, these bolts and then we're going to go ahead and uh, just run it through the gears real quick make sure everything still feels good and then we're about ready to stick this thing back in the car and do a, a road test on it. Okay, the tranny's back in. Let's take it for a test drive. Let's see if there's any noise in fourth gear. All right, let's try this thing out. Get on the main road here so we can get in fourth gear. Live in the foothills, so everything's a windy road. No noise, fourth gear. Get out of acceleration here, just coast. That's where the noise was. Sounded good, shifting good too. The gate on this thing is super tight, super tight. It's hard to tell if you're in first gear or third gear. Let's go through the gears again here. Acceleration, no noise. Acceleration, no noise. Coasting, no noise. We got it. All right. Too much uh, in play caused that noise. Let's get up here and turn around. The new brakes work great. All right, let's hit it. A little bit of a curve here. like that. All right, pretty happy. That transmission had me a little wor worried, I'll tell you. But everything's working good. Shifts work good. Second gear, heel climb. Plenty of power. All 
Alright. One last thing to do. Smoky burnout. That went pretty good. Okay guys, that just about wraps up this video on getting the Muncie four speed to quiet down in fourth gear. And there's nothing worse. I mean, that transmission was good when I pulled it out. It was just leaking out of the counter shaft, it was loose and you know, some seal problems, the back bushing was shot, but uh, pulled it apart, put some new parts in it, put it back in, all of a sudden I got a fourth gear noise uh, cruising. So, you know, there's something I did obviously that caused it, but it turns out it was just input shaft, uh, too much in play in the input shaft. Uh, max is supposed to be 25 thousandths, we were at 55 thousandths, so 30 thousandths is quite a bit. So we got it down to 16 thousandths in play, um, and it's shifting really, really, really good. I love the way this car shifts, and it's nice and quiet, and all the gears, all acceleration, deceleration, even in reverse, it's quiet. So I'm really happy about this. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.